Hello Revolution students and welcome back to another video on the Russian Revolution area of study one. In this video we are going to look at the July days which ran from the 3rd of July 1917 through to the 6th of July 1917. It was a series of protests against the uh, authority of the provisional government and its rule. There were a number of causes of the July days. And they included a ministerial clash over the Ukrainian independence. The Ukrainians wanted independence. Very, uh, very relevant for us uh, today. News of the failure of the June offensive on the southwestern front against the Germans. And the provisional government's mounting problems. For example, its inability to bring peace um, and end World War I. The protesters included half of the 1st Machine Gun Regiment which was loyal to the Bolsheviks, you can see there, of the uh, Petrograd garrison, 20,000 Kronstadt sailors carrying banners with the Bolshevik slogans, peace, bread and land, and all power to the Soviets, those two key political slogans that Lenin came up with, and 20,000 workers from the Pudilov Steelworks, as well as other protesters too. It was unclear who was responsible for the failed uprising. Some historians believe or argue it was the Bolsheviks who were responsible. Other historians uh, have different opinions. Uh, we will look at some of those later on in this video. But the Bolsheviks blame the Mensheviks and the SRs and the Mensheviks and the SRs, well, they blame the Bolsheviks. After the July days, the provisional government put the blame squarely on the Bolsheviks themselves and called them German agents. Okay, and so what were the consequences of the July days? It showed that the opposition to the provisional government, revolutionary groups such as the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks and the SRs were still disunited. It also showed the Bolsheviks were still far from being the dominant revolutionary party and after the July days, they appeared to be a spent force. Many of them, we know, uh, went into hiding. Trotsky was arrested, arrested, so was Kamenev. Lenin fled to Finland. And it also showed that the PG still had the power to resist an armed insurrection. And we can see there, as I just said, Trotsky and Kamenev were arrested. Lenin fled to Finland. Uh, an important consequence, though, of this uprising was that it strengthened Trotsky's role in the Bolshevik party as it demonstrated his loyalty. So Trotsky had only a few days before uh, committed to joining the Bolshevik party and uh, the fact that he went to prison in support of uh, the Bolshevik party and the July days protest uh, gave him a greater authority within the party itself. Okay, let's have a look at some more consequences. So, it taught Lenin and Trotsky that the Bolsheviks needed to be fully prepared next time they attempted to overthrow the provisional government, i.e. they needed to have sufficient popular and military support to succeed. Important lessons for October uh, 1917 revolution. Uh, it taught them that a well-planned military operation was more effective than large-scale attacks in overthrowing the provisional government, for example, taking over key points within the city, the telegraph stations and so forth, ammunition dumps and etc. So even though after the July days uh, the Bolsheviks appeared to be a spent force, they did regain their popularity as a consequence of a couple of events. For example, uh, you can see there as a consequence of their land policy, and this is when Lenin uh, pretty much stole or took the uh, SR's land policy of land to the peasants and recognising the peasant land seizures, which had been going on uh, since the start of the February 1917 revolution. Um, so this helped to revive the popularity of the Bolsheviks. And the other key event was the Kornilov Affair in which the Bolsheviks played a key role in defending Petrograd against uh, Kornilov and his forces. And then that led to a number of key events such as uh, the formation of the Military Revolutionary Committee and the Bolsheviks gaining a majority within the uh, Petrograd Soviet and the Moscow Soviet um, after or in September 1917. 
Okay, let us now look at a couple of historical interpretations about the July days. So the first one, and this one is from Richard Pipes, and he writes, no event in the Russian Revolution has been more willfully lied about than the July 1917 insurrection. The reason being that it was Lenin's worst blunder, a misjudgment that nearly caused the destruction of the Bolshevik party. To absolve themselves of responsibility, the Bolsheviks had gone to unusual lengths to misrepresent the July Putsch as a spontaneous demonstration which they sought to direct into peaceful channels. So we can see there that Richard Pipes is blaming the Bolshevik party and Lenin in particular for uh, starting this, the July days and uh, blaming them for its failure. In contrast to that, we have the second historical interpretation from Orlando Fiege, and he writes, The exact intentions of the Bolshevik leaders have always been a subject of fierce controversy. Some historians have argued that the Bolsheviks were planning to overthrow the provisional government by armed force. Richard Pipes, for example, claims that the July affair was orchestrated from the start by the Bolshevik leaders as a power seizure. It was only when the embarrassing failure of the putsch became clear that they sought to conceal their intentions by depicting the uprising as a spontaneous demonstration which they sought to direct into peaceful channels. This last version of events as a spontaneous demonstration was the standard Soviet view. On the face of the evidence, it does appear that the Central Committee had anything but a clear plan. So this is Fiji's view. In a manner underestimated by all historians, the events of 4 July were characterised by almost total confusion. The Bolshevik leaders made everything up as they went along. So, Fiji is arguing that the Bolsheviks, they played a role, yes, but they did not uh, plan it from the get-go. They were more responding to the protests as they uh, started and they started, uh, they tried to direct them in some fashion, but not very well. Okay, so there is a couple of historical interpretations about the July days. I hope you have found this video on the July days useful for your study of the Russian Revolution, area of study one, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.